Today we're going to be pruning this cherry tree of mine. The general idea is to reduce the fungal infection risk while encouraging new growth. I've always read and seen summer is the best time right after harvesting uh, the fruits, but it, it may vary. A lot of that has to do with not wanting to get this silver leaf disease. I like to sterilize my equipment with rubbing alcohol, which should be done between different trees. But I have a spray bottle, spray the tool, wipe it off with a paper towel, and you're good. The branches should be pruned to a length about a foot off of it, and the side shoots about half a foot. Of course, you should cut weak and dying away completely and any stems or branches that are crossing should also be trimmed back to reduce disease from the branches rubbing against each other. You should also prune on a dry day and use a sharp pair of secateurs. I use an angle grinder to sharpen mine uh, when need be. There are certain things you need to watch for while pruning. You want to cut at a slope so that water doesn't sit on it. Try to cut at an outward facing bud to help keep the middle clear and the growth out. There are many wrong ways of doing it, but it seems there is no one correct way of pruning. I feel like the trees appreciate the attention and you get better results by helping to keep the tree healthy. So here we go and watch how I don't follow my own rules, but enjoy. So. There are a couple of ways I like to personally start. Well, first of all, I have to kind of introduce my friends. I've got on one hand the secateurs, which have been sterilized and sharpened. And on the other hand, I have the loppers uh, to take off the bigger stuff. The third option is then to do this with a pruning saw. Uh, since we redid our winter garden and killed all the grass and everything in the yard, ever since then, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, where it is at the moment, but since I have kept the tree in pretty good condition I don't think there is uh, there are any branches that I have to take care of that require the saw and if I do find one I do have a telescope uh, chainsaw I could probably use to take it off. The stuff I kind of like to do to start with is just starting kind of on the outside uh, You cut it back some but I also kind of like to get a little bit of shape I think this tree is something like 30 years old. I, I don't know exactly. So I have been cutting it aback for the six years that we've lived here. It's probably been reduced by about three meters. So that's a little under, a little under, it's not sure, but something like three yards. It's off by a little bit. I, I kind of would like to get it where I'm able to harvest everything from a ladder. All that stuff up top, it's not, it's for the birds. The way I plan on starting, is going to be kind of getting the outside kind of shape. But there's a couple of different ways. The main central leader, I kind of screwed that up when I capped it. And so now you can almost kind of see how it's split and it's kind of gone on its, uh, its own way. I don't find it that bad for me personally because I would like to keep it smaller. So to keep it small, you kind of have to cut it back. Outside of that, I'm gonna be taking out a little bit on the side maybe a little bit from underneath so that I can get by with the lawnmower. But other than that, because it's a windy day, it's probably just some nice relaxing music and a time lapse of me cutting it down. So let's get to it. One more thing. I like to walk around the tree. I really do, because you know, like you look at it this way, and it's a totally different thing when you're looking at it two-dimensionally or three. So I like to walk around the tree to get a feel for what I'm going to cut. And one thing that you really need to be careful for, uh, or careful of, is always double check before you cut. I can't tell you how many times I've like, oh, this is good. And you get in there and you do, ah, and you just start checking away. And then a branch that was an important branch or one that you didn't mean to cut gets cut. So. That being added, that's what I kind of do, walk around. That's why I like to do the outside of the shape uh, first. And again, there are so many different pruning methods and different ways that you're able to get it. Like I said, I'm just kind of cutting mine down. We have one across the street in the cherry tree. I think it's 
probably 10, 15 meters. I mean, when you have like a tree that tall, it's, it's no good. Um, okay, it's a wild kind of variety, but still. So that's when I walk around and then kind of cut, 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 to see what I'm gonna do. I'm not exactly sure because as I'm looking, it's a lot more complicated than I thought up at the very top, so. Um, and another thing is you're not supposed to take off more than about a third of the tree a year. Uh, you can kind of do what you want by what I've seen, but the problem is uh, you'll really piss off the tree. And uh, if you uh, cut it back too far, <laughs> um, then you're gonna have the problem of it not producing. So let's do this again. So getting it down to exactly kind of the height I wanted took off a lot more than I, I wanted to exactly. But I'm actually finally getting to where I wanted after all these years. So now all that's kind of left is to kind of round out these outside and cut out the cross. Um, this is gonna stress the tree a lot. Uh, also, come on, be honest. How many of you were hoping I was going to fall out of the tree? I, or not hoping, but wondering. Or maybe hoping, who knows. But yeah, I also had to get... The name fails me now, but I will put it in. Um, because I only have the German Wundbazam to close up the tree after you cut it. There were a couple of cuts up there that were pretty big, and so I thought, see if it ends. Uh, yeah, so now I'm just kind of doing a little bit of the further out hanging stuff, cleaning up the bottom, and then going to cut the ones that are crossing and all this kind of stuff. So one last little bit, and then hopefully the tree won't be too, too mad at me, but it's part of the game. Okay, that's gonna have to be good for now. Lots of leaf cover gone. Um, it'll be it'll be fine in the long run. I like I said, normally I wouldn't have cut this much, but I am also trying to get it to the form that I want by clearing it out a lot. There was a lot of crossing in the middle, and then a lot of it was just that too high. I mean, we can't even put a cherry uh, a net over it, the cherry tree to help keep the birds off of it because it was just too big to even try to get it up and over. It's a little wide on this side and a little bit on this side towards the front. But like I said, I mean, I took a lot out of it. So it's probably gonna be pissed off at me next year, which means less, um, less cherries. This year was actually a pretty good year. I don't know, I think it was like three or four kilos. It's not the, the most we've ever had, but it was, I mean, they were all very delicious and everything looked good, so. Now I just had to clean up the mess. <laughs> but other than that, 
Uh, this is where I'd like to stop it for now. I mean, the season isn't completely done yet, so it still has some time to recover a little bit, but it's almost like the lilac, how if it gets out of control and then you really, really cut it back, it's really mad that first year, but then it like, it comes back and things are stronger. And this is what we've had. I mean, when we first got the tree, there were, weren't that many cherries on it. Year by year, I cut it back a little bit more every time and try to get it how I want it, and then it does get better and better. The apple tree is a different story. It's, it's being difficult, but I'm hoping by going in and like kind of how I'm doing it here, intensively cut out this crossing so that a lot more air could get to it. I mean, like the tree looks empty now, but it's also like letting a lot more light down into the center of the tree, which is also gonna help with the airflow, which will also keep the fungal risk that we were talking about earlier to a minimum. Now again, I'm not perfect. I'm a hobby gardener. I've never learned this stuff. It's just reading a bunch of stuff or looking online or watching other YouTubers, but I, I try. And everybody says you have a green thumb. And I always wonder why or what does that even mean? Because all I really do is give the plants water when they need water and food when they need food. Other than that, it's the sun and I have no control over that. But then I think about it with times like this and it is just these little things where you do give your, your plants or your trees some attention and then they actually do kind of reward you for it. So yeah, I was really rough with it this, this time. And, um, be honest though I don't even think it was the roughest, roughest I've ever been so this is a good start now the boring part of me collecting up all the leaves and branches we'll see what we do with that either compost and get rid of them somehow or we'll figure it out but now for the last part we go on to the cleanup Um, do as I say, don't do as I do. This uh, pile, let's see if I can get this here. The pile looks like it might be a little bit more than a third. The question kind of is, what is a third? Are we talking the density of the tree? Are we talking growth size overall? Yeah, either way, less than that. Also, don't climb a ladder the way I climb a ladder. Don't uh, uh, support yourself on trees and stuff. Like I said, do, hobby gardeners doing things the way I do, but they're not always the safest or the best. But, uh, oh yeah, you know, of course, not recording it, the trees. Getting some bird visitors, checking out what I've, what I've done to their tree. But yeah, so this was uh, pruning a, a cherry tree. Uh, the basics, he kind of uh, follow the same for all stone fruits, uh, so that summer is the best time for those. Apples and other trees like that you can do in uh, winter time. Uh, I don't have all the different trees and, and stuff offhand. I basically kind of know a little bit and learn more every year about the stuff I have in my garden. Try to get some new stuff on it but uh, just try to keep it a nice, happy, healthy place. So uh, thanks for uh, enduring <laughs> my uh, uh, ladder pitfalls and uh, everything. And uh, thanks for watching me prune my cherry tree. Look forward to seeing you guys the next time. Thanks, and we'll see you then. Ciao.